Welcome back to Frank. My name's Kat Davidson. If you've just joined us, then you've missed a tale of high woe told from a hospital bed or just by this couch by Chris Wayne. He's here, he's whole, and he's ready to start this break. Hello, Chris. Hello. Shout out to the people at RBH for putting my nose back together. <laughs> yeah. And blessedly, uh, the medical profession has been on standby also for Nick Bartlett, mm. who is uh, our actor, uh, recently graduated mm. uh, from QUT Academy of the Arts. And uh, you're a more accident prone person. Yeah, when I was a kid, when I was a kid, when I was younger. When I was younger, I was a bit, oh, what's the PC term? Oh, I get in trouble. I want to say tarred. I was a tarred. No, don't say that. No, that's it. Oh, what's the term? No, it's well, it's certainly not that. So when you were, when you were <coughs> young, I wonder who their favorite <laughs> guest is right oh, now hey, on the you, show. You. <laughs> when you were younger, Nick, were you the kind of kid that your mum sent out with the stack hat? Because no, she, she was... wanted to. I just wouldn't wear it because <laughs> it was big and yellow. She tried, like a proper stack hat. She tried once. Were you on a bike or were you just going out for a walk? <laughs> she was a bit worried. On a bike. But in general, no, yeah, I was, uh, I, I need a word. I really need a word. You need several. <laughs> I, was, I was uncoordinated. There you go. Oh. That's much better. Use your words. See what happens. I was actually that kind of child that asked for a stack hat. Oh, really? Yeah. They were cool though. Yeah, when mine was a little, out. it had yeah. the, the brightly coloured tyres on it. I was rocking Cable that Cable tyres to what, to stop the crows and... Yeah, sure. But yeah. I just thought they looked cool. It was like spooky dokies for your head. Yeah. No, mm. I think that the coolness of that passed by the time I was I was a deeply uncool yeah. child. But let's <laughs> let's I've talk about fashion conscious. Let's talk about you. There were a couple of times where you landed yourself uh, yeah. under the watchful eye of the medical profession. Tell us tell us how a jumper brought you unstuck. Um I was uh, so my mum used to work real early and so I had to leave for work with her and then I'd wait at school from about quarter to eight until everyone got there, which would have been about eight thirty. And so one morning it was in Windsor and it was really cold. And so I sat up like this and thought it was a good idea to put my jumper over my legs. Every kid's done that. Yeah, and I was still cold. And so I put my arms inside my jumper. And so I was sitting there with my arms around, like with my jumper over me like this. And I thought it was a good, like, I was bored. So I had to kill 45 minutes in the morning. So I would like rock back and forth to see how far I could go without going <laughs> over. Oh Some, my goodness. And then I went... <laughs> Sorry. Some kids would read. Or... No, oh no, I wasn't a reader. I wasn't a Harry Potter kid. And so I was rocking back and forth and I went too far forward. And then as I went over, I tried to put my arms out to save me. Went like that, tried to put my legs out to save me. And the first thing that connected with the ground was my forehead. Wow. Yeah, it sucked really badly. What effect did that have? The wind was the worst because I had this dirty big graze right here. <laughs> And the wind was the most painful because I remember my mum worked in the city and she had to come and get me, which is a half an hour train, and then take me to the doctors. And I remember the worst part was be walking down the main street of Mortdale, which is where I'm from, and wind hitting it and having to walk backwards down the street. <laughs> <laughs> like Michael Jackson with a head injury. <laughs> Without the moonwalk. <laughs> So I was like, Mum, it really hurts, it really hurts. Like the wind, it really hurts. She's like, oh, it's fine. But it's like, imagine an open wound here with no flesh to... Did you in. think about how that would look to... Uh, there's <laughs> just a kid right now. walking along the street, just screaming into the wind was, and then was, turning around. I was around. like, Mum, it hurts, it hurts. And she, I think she was like, we'll walk backwards. So I walked backwards holding her hand for about 200 metres to the car. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> imagine how bad it could have been if you packed your brain that day. You could have been seriously hurt. <laughs> And it's not the first time no. that you, you had landed yourself in this kind so, of trouble. So two years previous, I was sitting on, I had a six foot fence and I lived in Perth for two years and I had a six foot fence, which isn't much now because I'm over six foot, but then it's like, whoa. And so me and my best friend would sit on oh. the fence, right? Just quietly, Nick, I have a six foot fe fence at home and I would not be putting you on it <laughs> at this stage in case you had not after a, that last a boo-boo, but carry in on. In case I had a jumper. Uh, and so we had, and so the neighbor's shed was behind, like in, in, in the neighbor's yard. Where else would you expect it? And so me and my best friend would sit and lie back on the shed because, I don't know, ponder life and talk and whatnot. And this one day, it was really hot and I had like a dirt backyard, right? And he was playing with the hose. And no, <laughs> don't make any jokes. Um, he was playing with the hose and spraying me and it was all fun and games. And I was like, ah, and I'd fall back on the shed. And then we started talking and 
and, and <laughs> we, well, I was going to say one thing led to another. I'm really thinking of my words and how that comes across. And so, I'm, and, and so then he sprayed me again and I went, ah, oh, and didn't know that I moved across. And so I tumbled backwards off the six foot fence onto the steel guttering that was on the bottom and created, I don't know if you can see that, but that bad boy. It's no, about that just big. looking at your hair there. I could get, yeah, I could, when I've got to, yeah, I could show you, I could show you. And um, it, it was bad and I asked mum if I was going to die and she said no. And then I was in that. Uh, Were you walking forwards into the wind to avoid no, the screaming I, at this I, time? No, I back, back rolled ass overhead and landed on the, uh, on the guttering and I uh, thought I was going to die at seven years old, which was pretty, not the opposite of life affirming. I suck with words today. But you've had two head injuries yeah. that have hit yourself up. <laughs> That's when I told Catch, I was like, so I'm surprised you can think. Um, and we are seeing evidence that I have clearly damaged neurons. Is your mum still overprotective of you after yeah. all this? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, she, I, I just recently went to India and, and didn't tell her I uh, went paragliding until she saw the video of the guy who I was doing it tandem well, with. Well, you probably didn't mean to go paragliding. You probably <laughs> just went found to myself in and the accidentally air. fell into a parachute. Yeah. You thought people were kiting. <laughs> <laughs> Can I come? <laughs> So yeah, and then the kicker is that I was in the hospital bed uh, getting stitched up and mum was like, squeeze my hand when it hurts. Uh, and the lady who was doing it, or the nurse, was, was saying, all right, I'm just testing the wound with my thumb. Turns out she had to put eight different needles in and every time I, she did that, which was her thumb, I'd squeeze mum's hand and the next day her hand was purple because they were putting needles in my head and I thought it was her thumb and mum said, squeeze your hand, her hand. Wow. So I did. How awesome are mums though? Yeah, she's great. I feel comforting just hearing that. She's a saint. Comforted. I hope I, your that mom, made me miss her. I hope your mum sees this. She won't. She's in Sydney. Mum, I miss you. There is such a thing as the internet uh, where you will find Oh, she's, this, she's getting good program. at the internet too. Now we are very nearly out of time, but uh, I wanted to ask for those who've fallen madly in love with both of you. Um, probably one more than the other, I suspect, uh, <laughs> during this program. But where would they, they find you in this great earth, Chris Wayne? Yeah, sure. Look, I'm on all the social medias. The Naked Magicians is the nakedmagicians.com.au. Love me a bit of Twitter, which is Chris Wayne Magic and uh, CW Magic for Instagram. Never do that again. Nick Bartlett, oh. where would we find you? You won't find me on the Facebooks, but you will find me yeah. on the YouTubes under Smartlet. That's my alias. It's pretty clever. And yeah. you'll actually find my, uh, my adventures from India and you can even see me paragliding. Mm. Thank you very much for spending some time with us. My name's Kat Davidson. The show is called Frank and I look forward to seeing you again.